you join me now for our responsive call to worship. The people stood yelling, and it breaks our hearts every time, for Jesus' death occurs every time someone is ignored, mistreated, oppressed. It tears away at God's beloved. Our first reading tonight is from the John chapter 18. It is verses 1 through 12. When he had finished praying, Jesus left with his disciples and crossed the Kidron Valley. On the other side there was an olive grove, and his, his, and his disciples went into it. Now Judas, who had betrayed him, knew the place, because Jesus had often met there with his disciples. So Judas came to the grove, guiding a detachment of soldiers and some officials from the chief priests and Pharisees. They were carrying torches, lanterns, and weapons. Jesus, knowing all that was going to happen to him, went out and asked them, Who is it you want? Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. I am he, Jesus said. And Judas the traitor was standing there with them. When Jesus said, I am he, they drew back and fell to the ground. Again he asked them, Who is it you want? And they said, Jesus of Nazareth. I told you that I am he, Jesus answered. If you are looking for me, then let these men go. This happened so that the words he had spoken would be fulfilled. I have not lost one of those you gave me. Then Simon Peter, who had a sword, drew it and struck the high priest's servant, cutting off his right ear. Jesus commanded Peter, Put your sword away. Shall I not drink the cup the Father has given me? Then the detachment of soldiers, with its commander and the Jewish officials, arrested Jesus. They bound him. We're now going to sing our song, O Sacred Head. Now wounded, it is actually number 127. I apologize, my hymnal at home is a little different. It is number 127 in the red hymnal.
John, verses 13 through 18, 25, and 20 through 27. He brought him first to Annas, who was the father-in-law of Caiaphas, the high priest that year. Caiaphas was the one who had advised the Jew who had advised the Jews that it would be good if one of the men died for the people. Simon Peter and another disciple were following Jesus. Because this disciple was known to the high priest, he went with Jesus into the high priest's courtyard, but Peter had to wait outside at the door. The other disciple, who was known to the high priest, came back, spoke to the girl on duty there, and brought Peter in. Surely you are not another of this man's disciples, the girl at the door asked Peter. He replied, I am not. It was cold, and the servants and officials stood around the fire they had made to keep warm. Peter also was standing with them, warming himself. Join me now in a prayer of reconciliation for Good Friday. Ever present God, on this Good Friday night, our whole world is engulfed in shadows as we remember the story of Jesus' death. We confess that we want to push the fast forward button on this familiar story because it hurts so much. It hurts to think of the betrayal and arrest of Jesus. It hurts to imagine Jesus abandoned and suffering on the cross with only a faithful few watching him breathe his last breath. It hurts to watch your life overtaken by the shadows of the world. But we must find our place in this crucifixion story and feel the pain that is there. The pain of the world, of faithless decisions, of betrayal, of injustice. Jesus entered that pain out of faithfulness to you and to us to witness to the truth that is justice, wholeness, and love. We confess we are afraid to enter this pain with Jesus. Strengthen us with your courage. Offer glimpses of hope in the shadows of death. Let us know you are present with us here in this moment of pain. Now, as always, amen. We now have Alex who's going to sing some special music.
Hear this assurance of blessing. Beloved followers of Jesus, it is okay to feel hurt and uncomfortable as you enter into this story and imagine you're placed in it. Know that God meets you in the story with comfort as well as challenge, with courage as well as love. We now move on to our third reading, again from John, verses 28 to 38. Then the Jews led Jesus from Caiaphas to the palace of the Roman governor. By now it was clearly morning, and to avoid ceremonial uncleanliness, the Jews did not enter the palace. They wanted to be able to eat the Passover. So Pilate came up to them and asked, What charges are you bringing against this man? If he were not a criminal, they replied, we would not have handed him over to you. Pilate said, Take him yourselves and judge him by your own law. But we have no right to execute anyone, the Jews objected. This happened so that the words Jesus had spoken indicating the kind of death he was going to die would be fulfilled. Pilate then went back inside the palace, summoned Jesus, and asked him, Are you the king of Jews? Is that your own idea, Jesus asked, or did others talk to you about me? Do you think I am a Jew, Pilate replied? It was your people and your chief priest who handed you over to me. What is it you have done? Jesus said, My kingdom is not of this world. If it were, my servants would fight to prevent my arrest by the Jews. But now my kingdom is from another place. You are a king then, said Pilate. Jesus answered, You are right in saying I am a king. In fact, for this reason I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone on the side of the truth listens to me. What is truth? Pilate asked. With this, he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. We're now going to sing our next song, Go to Tark. Get somebody again in the red hymnal, number 126. truth, Pilate asked. With this he went out again to the Jews and said, I find no basis for a charge against him. 
but it is your custom for me to release to you one prisoner at the time of the Passover. Do you want me to release the king of the Jews? They shouted back, No, not him. Give us Bar Barabbas. Now Barabbas had taken part in a rebellion. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him flogged. The soldiers twisted together a crown of thorns and put it on his head. They clothed him in a purple robe and went up to him again and again, saying, Hail, O King of the Jews, and they struck him in the face. Once more Pilate came out and said to the Jews, Look, I am bringing him out to you to let you know that I find no basis for a charge against him. When Jesus came out wearing the crown of thorns and the purple robe, Pilate said to them, Here is the man. As soon as the chief priests and their officials saw him, they shouted, Crucify! Crucify! But Pilate answered, You take him and crucify him. As for me, I find no basis for a charge against him. The Jews insisted, We have a law, and according to that law he must die, because he claimed to be the Son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was even more afraid, and he went back inside the palace. Where do you come from? he asked Jesus. But Jesus gave him no answer. Do you refuse to speak to me, Pilate said? Don't you realize I have the power either to free you or to crucify you? Jesus answered, You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. From then on, Pilate tried to set Jesus free, but the Jews kept shouting, If you let this man go, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who claims to be a king opposes Caesar. When Pilate heard this, he brought Jesus out and sat down on the judge's seat at a place known as the Stone Pavement. It was the day of preparation of Passover week, about the sixth hour. Here is your king, Pilate said to the Jews. But they shouted, take him away, take him away, crucify him. Shall I crucify your king, Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the chief priest answered. Finally, Pilate handed him over to them to be crucified. We're now going to sing hymn number 129, the first three verses, When I Surveyed the Wondrous Cross on page 129. <laughs>
first reading is from John chapter 19, verses 16b to 27. So the soldiers took charge of Jesus. Carrying his own cross, he went out to the place of the skull. Here they crucified him, and with him two others, one on either side, and Jesus in the middle. Pilate had a notice prepared and fastened to the cross. It read, Jesus of Nazareth, the King of the Jews. Many of the Jews read this sign, for the place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Aramaic, Latin, and Greek. The chief priest of the Jews protested to Pilate, Do not write the King of the Jews, but that this man claimed to be King of the Jews. Pilate answered, What I have written, I have written. When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, divided, dividing them into four shares, one for each of them, with the undergarment remaining. This garment was seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom. Let's not tear it, they said to one another. Let's decide by lot who will get it. This happened that the scripture might be fulfilled, which said, They divided my garments among them, and cast lots for my clothing. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary, the wife of Clopas, and Mary of Magdala. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to his mother, Dear woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. We're now going to sing When I Survey the Wondrous Cross, number 129. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please excuse me, we're not. Will you join me in our prayer? Ever present God, we are amazed that Jesus, nearing his death, reached out to comfort and empower those dearest to him. At the foot of his cross, he called his mother and his beloved disciple into a new community. Give us the grace and courage to join them there, welcoming all who struggle and grieve into this new covenant of love and grace. Our sixth reading from John 19, verses 28 to 30. Later, knowing that all was now completed, and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put the sponge on a stalk of hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. When he had received the drink, Jesus said, It is finished. With that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. We're now going to sing our next hymn on number 223, Were You There?
reading for tonight, John 38 to 42. Later, Joseph of Arimathea asked Pilate for the body of Jesus. Now Joseph was a disciple of Jesus, but secretly because he feared the Jews. With Pilate's permission, he came out and took the body. He was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices and strips of linen. This was in accordance with Jewish burial customs. At the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jesus there. Were you there?